dear students uh, this is our fourth lecture on medicinal chemistry and continuing with physico chemical properties of uh, drugs uh, in today's lecture we will discuss what are the steric features of the drug uh, in earlier lectures uh, we have gone through uh, the basic concepts of medicinal chemistry in our first lecture then uh, we have started with physico chemical properties and in the first lecture on physico chemical properties we have gone through hydrogen bonding and chelation whereas uh, in the next lecture uh, we have discussed about bioisosterism and surface tension how they uh, are important for uh, the various uh, biologically active compounds now uh, in this lecture uh, we will discuss about steric features of drugs now uh, if uh, we go uh, through the basics of the biological activity of any uh, targeted drug molecule this will uh, mainly depend on the physico chemical characteristics and uh, in uh, the various types of uh, characteristics we have already seen how uh, hydrogen bonding and bioisosterism or surface tension they affect the biological activity of drug molecule similarly uh, the nature and type of the drug molecules that is uh, the type of functional groups present in the drug molecule and how uh, their uh, arrangement of such group is there in the space or spatial arrangement of such groups in the molecule that will also affect the biological activity of the targeted uh, drug molecule uh, this is uh, basically because if we uh, see that human body uh, represents an asymmetric environment and because of that the drug molecule uh, has to interact with proteins and uh, biological macromolecules or receptors uh, where the interaction with the receptor will lead to the uh, activity of the drug and as these are asymmetric in nature proteins and biological macromolecules so the uh, type of arrangement of different functional groups on the molecule uh, which is being used as drug is also important and uh, this is important because uh, the uh, right fitment of the correct 3d orientation of the functional moieties in a drug substance may ultimately result in the formation of an extremely viable and reasonably strong interaction with its receptor and if there will be a strong interaction of the drug molecule with the receptor only then that molecule will be effective as a drug so uh, if we are having a chiral drug that means uh, that uh, chiral drug may fit to uh, a receptor site due to strong interaction and this strong interaction will lead to the desired pharmacological effect whereas if uh, the chiral molecule does not fit to the receptor site and there is no interaction of the drug with the receptor molecule as you have seen uh, you can see here that these are the uh, receptor sites of the uh, macromolecule or protein and this is our chiral molecule and if the function groups present on the chiral molecule they will fit into these receptor site only then a strong interaction will take place and this strong interaction will result in the pharmacological effect whereas in this orientation of the molecule the functional groups or the atoms present on the molecule they do not fit into the receptor sites correctly and because of this there is no interaction between the chiral drug molecule and the receptor sites on the protein hence there will be no pharmacological or biological effect of the drug molecule on the receptor site hence 
there needs to be strong interaction between the drug molecule and the receptor sites on the protein and this can only be achieved if the arrangement of such groups in the drug molecules is proper and they are oriented properly uh, with respect to the receptor site of the proteins. Now uh, the uh, drug uh, as I have told you drug must approach and fit closely into the receptor surface to evoke the pharmacological action. If the drug will fit closely into the receptor site only then pharmacological action of that molecule will be there otherwise that drug uh, will not be effective if it does not fit closely. Therefore, uh, the drug must possess a high degree of structural specificity or stereoselectivity you can say and that is why most of the drug molecules uh, which are effective as drugs they are chiral molecules. Now, uh, uh, for example, if uh, we take the case of diethyl stilbestrol, uh, you can see that this exists in two forms trans diethyl stilbestrol and cis diethyl stilbestrol. Now, uh, if we compare the activity of these two, the trans molecule is acting as estrogenic and it is much more effective than the cis anisomer which is only 7% as active as the trans molecule and the reason for uh, the uh, higher activity of uh, this trans diethyl still be stroll is because of the orientation of uh, different molecules attached to this carbon carbon double bond the aryl groups they are in the same plane as that of carbon carbon double bond in case of trans molecule whereas uh, here because of these bigger groups they are not in the same plane as that of the uh, carbon carbon double bond so that is why because of the spatial arrangement of different groups around this uh, carbon carbon double bond they fit more closely to the receptor sites whereas these uh, molecules because of the orientation of uh, different groups they do not fit and they don't have a strong interaction with the receptor site so that is why this molecule is much more active than the this molecule or you can say this anisomer is more uh, pharmacologically active in comparison to cis. Similarly, another feature is uh, uh, which is important for drug interaction is conformational isomers. Uh, we know uh, that different atoms or uh, group in a single bond uh, they are arranged differently in space, and uh, these are called as conformations and if we rotate uh, if there is a rotation around these bonds new interconversion of conformers uh, is there and these are called as conformational isomers and uh, uh, there is an energy barrier between these conformational isomers and uh, because of the high energy barrier uh, they exist independently uh, during the reactions now uh, conformational isomers they uh, show significant differences in biological activity of different molecules uh, if we see uh, this molecule say acetylcholine and uh, uh, around this carbon we are having an acetate group and here we are having a trimethyl ammonium ion attached to this carbon now uh, the potential interaction energy uh, of trimethyl ammonium and acetoxy group is lowest in this form where these bigger groups they are anti to each other 
or we can say this is called as uh, uh, staggered confirmation or uh, this is also called trans uh, conformer or transoid uh, conformer so uh, here the energy of the system will be lowest because uh, the interaction uh, between these bigger group is lowest and uh, uh, this interaction is highest when uh, we are having such uh, such an uh, confirmation that is eclipsed confirmation or cis confirmation or cisoid confirmation so uh, when uh, these two bigger groups they eclipses each other then uh, the energy of the system will be highest and uh, here uh, when uh, acetylcholine uh, as a drug molecule interacts uh, with the receptor site say uh, when it interacts with the uh, muscarinic receptor then uh, this conformation is uh, the most uh, viable conformation which gives a strong interaction with the muscarinic receptor whereas uh, when uh, this molecule interacts with the nicotinic receptor then uh, this conformation there that is folded conformation is uh, most viable where the interaction is strongest and pharmacological action is uh, effective in the Gaussian conformation so uh, that means the uh, different conformation uh, they are very important in case of drug molecules now to uh, study the relationship between the possible conformations uh, we have taken the rigid analogs of acetylcholine uh, only uh, this part of the acetylcholine has been changed into uh, a cyclopropyl ring um, so that uh, this molecule become a rigid molecule and uh, the biological uh, facts of conformationally rigid analogs of uh, acetylcholine uh, have been used to uh, study the different pharmacological effects on the conformational isomers so we have taken uh, cis and trans isomers of 2 acetoxy cyclopropyl trimethyl ammonium iodide now uh, it was found that uh, trans isomer where the quaternary uh, nitrogen atom and acetoxy group when they are held apart in a shape approximating that of an extended conformation of acetylcholine a standard conformation means uh, the trans conformer so uh, when trans conformation uh, of acetylcholine is uh, there in the present trans isomer then uh, it was found uh, that muscarinic receptor uh, was shown the activity whereas uh, nicotinic activity was not shown by this isomer whereas uh, in case of uh, cis isomer no activity at all was shown either uh, with the nicotinic receptor or muscarinic receptor so uh, this basically indicates that acetylcholine uh, assumes stag staggered conformation at the muscarinic receptor that is why uh, this is active against muscarinic receptor uh, similarly optical isomers uh, they also affect the pharmacological activity of uh, various types of drug molecules uh, as we know that an isomer uh, the optical isomers they may be an isomers or diastereomers uh, for example uh, if we see the case of lactic acid uh, this is one enantiomer of lactic acid they are non superimposable mirror images of each other and they are optically active similarly uh, as naproxen sodium 
and this is r naproxen sodium another uh, isomer or an isomer uh, this these are again optically active isomers and uh, it was it has been found that s isomer is uh, active as an analgesic antipyretic and anti inflammatory agent whereas uh, r isomer is not at all active uh, uh, as far as uh, the activity as analgesic antibiotic or anti-inflammatory agent is concerned. So that means uh, the optical activity is uh, very important uh, for the pharmacological uh, action of different types of drug molecules. Uh, to the receptor site. So basically, this uh, molecule is uh, as an isomer is more active, or uh, this is uh, inactive because here uh, the as an isomer will find a strong interaction uh, with the receptor sites of the molecule uh, of the proteins, whereas uh, there will be no interaction uh, with the or naproxen sodium so that is why this is inactive and this is active and similarly for many uh, other types of biological molecules or drug molecules it has been found that one optical isomer show uh, biological activity whereas other is either not active or very very less active or even the other uh, isomer may or uh, optical isomer may have the adverse effect for example uh, hyosmine is 15 to 20 times more active than its uh, uh, other optical isomer then hyosine uh, is 16 to 18 epinephrine is 12 to 15 times more active as uh, visoconstrictor than uh, the positive epinephrine minus uh, isoprenaline is 800 times more active than its uh, other optical isomer then uh, plus non uh, homeoferin uh, is uh, 160 times more active than the other optical isomer. Uh, similarly, amino acids, ascorbic acids, and acetylidomide, uh, they one uh, optical isomer is much more active than the other uh, optical isomer. Uh, in case of uh, diastereomers, for example, uh, this is uh, plus tartaric acid, this is minus tartaric acid, this, this A and B, they are called as anisomers, whereas, uh, and these are optically active, whereas uh, in this uh, diastereomer, uh, this is a meso compound and this will be optically inactive because of the plane of symmetry present within the same molecule but a and c they will act as diastereomers so uh, these uh, stereo isomers they are not mirror images like uh, an isomers but uh, uh, these diastereomers they will possess different physical and chemical properties and because of the different physical and chemical properties they will show different uh, pharmacological action than the anisomers uh, for example if we see this uh, diastereomer uh, this pseudo ephedrine is uh, basically a non active compound or inactive compound whereas when this is having uh, this orientation or this diastereo isomeric form then uh, as a fitrin uh, this is a central nervous system stipula, uh, stimulant this act as or you can say this is a pharmacologically active um, uh, active compound now uh, what is the reason uh, behind uh, way uh, different uh, pharmacological activity of uh, different uh, optical isomer. Uh, uh, this is basically uh, because of the difference in interaction of the asymmetric uh, 
carbon atom of the molecule uh, with the stereospecific receptors. So this was proved uh, uh, by Essen and Stedman and they gave an, a hypothesis which is called as essen stedman hypothesis. According to this hypothesis, if uh, binding ions are specific for uh, one enantiomer, then a three-point attachment must occur between the enantiomer and the asymmetric surface of the receptor. Since uh, if we see these two uh, different orientations, uh, uh, this is a asymmetric drug molecule and these are the asymmetric drug binding sites. You can see that uh, different uh, atoms present on the asymmetric molecule here all the three points of the asymmetric drug molecule they interact with the three asymmetric sites present on the drug binding receptor and that is why the molecule in this orientation or in this stereochemistry will have a strong interaction with the drug, drug binding site and hence it will be pharmacologically active. It will be biologically active. Whereas if we see that uh, this enantiomer of the drug molecule or this optical isomer, then we can see that uh, there is no three-point attachment of the groups present on the drug molecule and drug binding site. So therefore, uh, this will not, will not show biological activity. So this is how uh, the different optical isomers, they show different uh, biological activity for uh, drug binding sites. So this is uh, an example in case of binding of enantiomers to receptors. Uh, if uh, we are having say this epinephrine and here uh, these are the three uh, groups uh, present on the drug molecule uh, which interact with the drug receptor site. So uh, this is a flat area on the drug receptor site so this interacts with this part of the drug molecule uh, this x uh, interacts with the oh uh, on this uh, oh function group on uh, this drug molecule whereas this quaternary ammonium uh, part interacts with the anionic site on the drug molecule so uh, there are three point attachment uh, of this drug molecule on the drug binding site hence uh, this will be biologically active whereas uh, when the orientation uh, the other enantiomer of the same drug molecule here the x is to interact with the oh group but here the orientation of oh group is different than in this enantiomer and there is no interaction between this receptor site and the uh, this part of the drug molecule. So that is why this uh, enantiomer uh, will not be active uh, for the same thing. So uh, that means for any activity or strong interaction between the drug molecule and drug receptor site, there must be a three-point attachment with the receptor. And uh, this is uh, called as essen stedman principle. These are the references uh, used for uh, preparing this lecture. Thank you very much.